Welcome to the YouTube video! My name is Michael Langley, I'm your ringmaster, and I'm about to show you the most jaw-dropping, heart-stopping, mind-bending logic session you've ever laid your eyes upon! Uh, hey guys, what's up? It's been nine months since my last upload, uh, we're not gonna talk about it, um, so I just recently watched The Amazing Digital Circus, which, um, is... Probably the most successful animated YouTube pilot show thing I think there ever has been in the history of YouTube. The video is two months old and it is currently sitting at the time of recording this video. Hold let me let me, let me go check real quick. It's currently sitting at 209 million views, and that number might change before this video actually comes out. Who knows? I'll, I'll put it in the edit if it gets any higher. The point being, it is a ridiculously popular video, and for good reason. It is a very, very creative concept. I highly recommend going watch it. It's not super long. It's only 25 minutes, which, you know, for a show nowadays is pretty normal length. I'm not going to go into, you know, a full-on, like, deep dive or review thing about it here, because that's not what this video is about. But... There is a song that plays at the end of the video. The actual creator of the show is also the person who made half of the soundtrack. But at the end of the episode, there is a song called Your New Home. And it is probably by far the most, like, praised song in the soundtrack. Because, I mean, if you, if you go look at the YouTube video for the soundtrack, it is like... The retention bar literally doesn't exist anywhere but that part of the video. Uh, everyone loves this song, and for good reason. And it definitely stands out when you're watching the video. And it's definitely stood out to me when I watched it about like a week ago. I was sitting here and just listening to this and I was like, man, it is really tempting to remake this song. Actually, one of the things that originally inspired me to want to make a remake of this song was that I was listening over to it and I noticed that there, there was a severe lack of, of organ in the song. It really, like, sort of, like, gave me even extra incentive to be like, man, I could really... I could really add my own touch to this. So that's precisely what I did. And uh, that is what we're looking at right now on my screen. Um, so we have in front of me yet another rather large logic session. Uh, this has kind of just become a trend now with all of my stuff uh, that I post on the YouTube channel. I mean, it makes sense. If you've listened to the song before, you kind of already got a sense for how big this logic session is going to be because it's a quite a dra dramatic song. Okay, so in the original song, the song starts off with piano and a music box. Drink or sleep in this digital world. So the digital food here only gives off the virtual sensation of eating. With and I thought this was cool. I'm not want here to say that, that I didn't think it sounded good, but I sort of had a, a different approach to how to create this beginning section. And um, that involved adding, you know, the thing that I, that I said the song desperately was missing was an organ, specifically a vintage organ. And I went through the extra effort of making sure that this this sounded very intimate. I actually went through on the organ plugin itself and made several edits to a lot of the settings. I made the amp a lot calmer. As you can see, the drive is not super high. The tone is kind of on the higher side. I turned the reverb actually completely off, but I did leave the cabinet uh, sound in. On top of that, on top of uh, these these setting adjustments to make it sound tighter, um, I also have the stereo spread on the actual track really low, so it can't can't go too far left, right? It's very kind of centered. And I also have a very, very small reverb space. I have like a small room set up. So it just kind of sounds like it. you literally have like just this organ and it's just sitting in like a bedroom and you just put a mic in front of it. Like it's very, very intimate, very tight. Along with this organ is... Uh, is a solo viola and a solo cello, both of which are still in that very kind of dry sound, very dry, dead rooms, that kind of sound. Kind of sounds like if you literally just took, took two, like a viola and a cello and literally just plopped them in a bedroom. Except these two are panned left and right, so they're very, 
but they're still very narrow. They're very tight sounding, but one of them is distinctly on the right side, one of them is distinctly on the left side. So that when you add all three of these together, it creates this very intimate but spread out kind of sound. It's really I, this is this is something that I think is very fitting for the start of this song, because it sort of sets you up for the for the big epic punch that occurs after this first phrase, just setting you up in this this nice thing that almost sounds like it was just recorded in like someone's living room. As you're probably looking to the to the right of my screen, you're probably noticing that after this phrase, the song gains a couple of layers, um, but we're not quite there. We have to work on there's a there's a little bit of a build up to this big section because we go from this quiet, intimate, tight space to this big theater stage sounding thing. And let me let me just play that for you real quick. So. How do we get from this quiet, intimate living room to a room that's like 20 times larger? Well, there's a bit of a, there's a bit, there's a bit of, you know, stuff happening here to make this transition a little bit, a little bit less sudden. So you can sort of kind of feel it arriving. Um, for one, we have non-soloed violin and cello because these two, these two tracks are solo viola and cello. These two are section viola and cello. So they're not, they're not nearly as intimate sounding. They have... By nature, they have a bigger sound. And they're sort of building very slow. They sort of fade their way in. And on top of that, these are not using the same intimate space that these other two are. These are very clearly in a big kind of theater stage kind of setting. Lots of, lots of washy reverb. I have a different reverb bus set up for these. Um, completely, completely different reverb bus that's using a much larger reverb preset. Um, I know, I know me showing you the exact same window twice is not going to show you what's different about it, but, <laughs> and then, um, on top of having these two much more like bigger sounding strings fade in, we also have on the last measure of the phrase, a timpani roll starting to fade in. Also... Very big sounding, extreme reverb, definitely in that same space as these two strings. And to top it all off, there's a synth bass, which is actually the only dry part of the entire big section. But there's a synth bass that slowly fades in. And we're going to get back to the synth bass in a moment. But those are the, the components that I've added, these these tracks here that I've sort of allowed to, as, as use for like sort of transitioning into this larger section. Now, let's talk about this larger section for a second. Let's first um, dissect the parts of the song in my remake that are actually present in the original song. And those two things, out of the things I have here, the two things that are actually present in the original song are the strings and the choir. These are the two main, basically, focus points of the original song. The strings I've kind of already partially covered, the bigger cellos and bigger violas from um, this build-up section do stay present throughout this part. With an added third voice being a violin section. And those three voices together cover the harmony of the song. And then, for the melody, I have a violin one and a violin two part playing the exact same thing. One of them is panned to the right and one of them is panned to the left. These are two different violin patches. That I, the plugin I'm using for this, which is BBC Symphony Orchestra, actually has two separate violin um, sounds, two separate violin samples, and these are the two diff the two separate solo violin patches or presets or whatever. And I have both of them playing at the same time, but panned on different sides, so you have this sort of just it just, it just adds a little bit of color to the melody because it's not all being played by one instrument.
I also put a, a decent amount of compression on specifically these two tracks because when you're dealing with melody instruments, you want them to be very compressed because you need them to be present throughout the mix. Um, and of course, this entire thing is drenched in that reverb from earlier. Hear that fade away? The choir is not really introducing any new ideas at all. It's basically playing the exact same part as these three tracks, just being translated to voice parts. So the cello parts being covered by the bass, the viola parts being covered by tenor, and the violin parts being covered by an alto. And they just kind of play the exact same things. Funny little side fact, actually. Um, cellos are actually a... Uh, cellos are a very unique instrument. They are a bass instrument, but they're a bass instrument with a lot of high range. However, a bass vocalist typically does not have this high range. So this cello part actually contains one note that the bass, the like the bass vocal sample on contact can't actually hit. It's out of the bass range on this plugin. So there's just you notice if you look at this region, there's one note that's just not there. And what I did is I had to move that note to the tenor. It still gets played. It just gets played by the tenor voice instead. I just thought that was a little funny. When you have them all unsoloed, you can't tell, but it's a, it's a kind of funny, kind of a little fun fact. This, of course, is even further drenched in the reverb because these are meant to sound even farther away from the uh, listener. An interesting fact about how these three tracks are lined up is that, like I said, these three tracks are playing the exact same material as these three tracks are. So how I have this laid out is I actually have it so that the, the two of them are directly complementing each other. If you look, the cello the cello track is panned 20, 20 points to the left. The bass, which is the counterpoint to this track, is panned 20 points to the right. And then the violas, 30 to the right. Tenors, 30 to the left. Alto, 40 to the right. Violins, 40 to the left. So the two of them become perfect counterpoints for each other. As to not cause any direct clashing with anything. So if I mute the, if I solo the cello and the bass together, they form, they, they all, all these tracks form perfect layers with each other because each one is complementing the other, which makes it so that when I solo the choir and the strings together, you can kind of still hear everything because I have this sort of left-right complement system set up. So now let's get to the stuff that's not necessarily in the original song. I mentioned how at the beginning, how the main addition to the song that was not featured in the original was to have an organ present in the song. And the the vintage organ from the beginning, more intimate section, does continue to exist throughout this part. In fact, it actually adapts slightly. I automated a few parameters so that in this section, it gets slightly wider and also has a lot more reverb. So it sort of slowly transitions into the larger space. But there is a much there's a much bigger element here, and that is what is the the more dramatic version of a vintage organ? Well, the OG, the pipe organ, the church organ, and that is that is by far the biggest new thing in this section. And these two things together create quite a quite a texture. An organ being a reed instrument, this covers the woodwind section for this entire part. So that's why there's no other woodwinds. This th these two instruments are the woodwinds for this part of the song. Moving along down, we have uh, there is a single brass instrument in the section of the song. More brass will show up later, but for now it's just there's just this uh, horn part, and the horn part is simply doubling the cello part once again. So now we have three parts playing the cello part. 
Also, something that I just find really funny, specifically the bass line of the song, like just the bass line, if you take away all the harmony and the melody and everything and you just, you just listen to the bass line, it sounds a lot like Pomp and Circumstance, you know, like the, the school graduation song. Gooseworks, did you do this on purpose? Why, why is this song my graduation? All right, next up on the docket, we have percussion, which honestly I've kind of already touched on. It's a timpani and a really big sounding thing. Timpani is covering a section of the bass part, but it only plays the first three notes before dipping until the next phrase. And then it doesn't play the rest of the bass line, but then it comes back here. And of course, the crash symbol is pretty self-explanatory. Last but not least, we have the synths, which there are two of. Uh, we have the synth bass. Now, the reason why I have a synth bass here, this is a very, very distorted sounding sub bass kind of thing. And this is, of course, doubling the bass line. That does a lot of things playing the bass line right now. The reason why I do this. Uh, this is something I do in a lot of my orchestral work. I always tend to put a deep sub bass kind of synth in the song. And that is because naturally, just in the real world is what I'm saying, like naturally, a lot of these instruments, a lot of these orchestral instruments, you know, strings, woodwinds, brass, none of these instruments really have that super low end bass that we have in a lot of modern music because they just, they just don't naturally create those frequencies. They do create low frequencies, but not the... The, the deep, like, below 100 hertz kinds of frequencies. They don't really produce a whole lot of those. So that, that, that part of the spectrum is largely left empty when you're writing orchestral music. And, and when, when you fill that space with something, it sounds magnificent when you listen to all of it together because it just, it just adds this, this, this fantastic layer of just awe to everything because it just it adds so much extra punch if you just fill that void fill that 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 sub bass void and the way you do that is with synthesizers so i with a lot of my orchestral work i have a tendency to put a sub bass in the mix because it really helps just emphasize the 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 grand scale of the sound <laughs> My goal with putting a sub bass in my music is really not to make it so that you can hear it because really you can't like this this texture is really lost beneath everything else the reason why this is here is to add that extra layer of oomph to everything like you're not really meant to hear it you're meant to feel it it's meant to rumble the bottom <laughs> And then, of course, um, the last element to this entire thing is I have a synth pad, which is just doubling the string part. I just have a string synth pad, which is, it, it's just kind of your typical 80s sounding synth pad. There's nothing too remarkable to say here. This, this instrument actually is a very interesting texture to have here because this instrument kind of sounds like the string section and the pipe organ combined. Like, when you solo all three of these, it, it creates a very interesting sound. Like, really, really, the, the synth pad is acting more or less as a bridge between the strings and the, the pipe organ, and I think it, it adds a nice touch to it, even though you can't really hear it, but it... it Trust me, it's doing something, I swear. I'm not going crazy, I swear. You heard it for a split second there. There's one one thing that gets added. Literally one thing. If you look at the if you look at the regions right now, this stays the same. Everything stays the same. There is one single thing that changes between this phrase and this phrase, and that is the introduction of the electric guitar, which um, I gotta say, ever since I got complete 14, 
I have gotten access to Electric Mint, the contact plugin. This this guitar is fantab is I almost said fantabulous. It's fantastic. You know what? Honestly, no, it is fantabulous. That is an accurate description of this guitar plugin. <laughs> So this guitar, just just for the sake of fun, I guess, let's listen to it by itself. Now this guitar I had a little bit of fun with. So the actual guitar plugin itself is set to the DI preset. So the actual plugin is simply giving me DI guitar. If I remove the effects off of this track real quick, it'll reveal that it is just in fact DI guitar. But, as you can see, obviously when I turn the effects back on, it does a little bit more than that, and that is due to this plugin, which is called Guitar Rig, which is yet another Native Instruments plugin. It's not Contact, I almost said it was Contact. It's a separate plugin, but it's Native Instruments, same company. If you haven't noticed, every plugin, every single plugin in my song is different than the last time you guys saw my stuff, which was all the way back in, what, March? In Death by Glamour? Uh, you might notice that literally every plugin you've seen on screen so far has been a different plugin, and that is because in May I upgraded my production suite and I got a whole ton of new plugins, and now everything I make sounds so much better. Like the quality difference between this and Death by Glamour is insane, and you guys probably have already noticed that by now, but I forgot to officially mention the fact that I got a whole ton of new plugins. This is Guitar Rig. Guitar Rig is a pedal board slash amp emulation software. So I could, in theory, set up this guitar chain in the actual logic effects chain. I could add a distortion, I could add a reverb, and then I could run it through an amp. Like I could do a whole spiel. But using Guitar Rig to do all of this instead of actually setting it up in the logic chain itself is a lot more authentic, I guess, because everything in Guitar Rig is meant to be an emulation of actual analog equipment. Um, and that's really fun to mess with. So what I have going on here is I have... Let's turn these all off real quick. So I have... This is just the regular DI signal from before. And I'm running this DI signal through a light distortion plugin called Dirt. And I, and I, know, I know you're about to say to me, Michael, light distortion? That didn't sound like light distortion to me. Sorry to burst your bubble, but like... Yeah, it is kind of light. It's light in the sense, not that it makes it a ton of louder, because uh, it did make it a, t a ton of loud. It's not, not, it's not light in the sense that it doesn't make it louder, because it does make it a lot louder. It's light in the sense that the actual signal quality is more or less the same. You can still very distinctly hear the guitar. It's still a very clean sound. It's definitely got that crunch to it, though. I won't lie. And then I'm running that through a reverb. And then um, all of that is running through an amp emulator, which is this thing on the bottom. And this is the thing that kind of really gives it its, its body. Amp emulators are really the heart and soul of this plugin. Really the heart and soul of just any guitar based plugin in general is amp emulators because the amp emulator is what gives the guitar its sound but all of that combined creates this sort of like crunchy but still kind of clean guitar sound which is what i was kind of going for and obviously it has a lot of reverb on it too and it adds a fantastic um little bit of color on top of the strings because it really Obviously, when it comes to trying to compare textures here, the guitar is closest to the strings in this regard, because it's playing the same part, and it quite literally is also a string instrument. So this, this, the guitar in general just adds a fantastic color to this entire thing.
All right, so now we enter the sort of like weird key change section of the song where everything kind of goes haywire for a little bit. <laughs> So let's break this down. Um, all of the stuff I've covered so far is more or less playing the exact same stuff. So if I solo the choir, the strings, the organs, and the like timpani and cymbals, and of course the synth bass, um, all of this stuff is basically doing the exact same thing. It's playing new music, but they're all playing the same roles. <laughs> But there are a couple of new elements that get added to this. Um, we have on top of the organ and the uh, the two organs playing this sort of like high note trill thing. I also introduced the plute, the the plute, the flute and the piccolo, which are also playing this um, sort of trill rising thing. But by far the most noticeable uh, addition to this section of the song is the addition of the marching percussion, which just comes out of nowhere. And now this is playing a completely original part. This is not anywhere in the original song whatsoever. I wrote this part catered to the song. Uh, if you want to hear it just in relationship to, to the song, I'm just going to solo the organ track so you can have a reference. I mean, I think I did a pretty good job. It's the completely original part, but I think it's very fitting with the music and it's also very kind of drumline-y. Uh, this plugin is actually a plugin I just recently obtained called Originals Drumline, which is a Spitfire plugin. And oh my god, I don't know how I didn't know about this earlier. This plugin is literally $30. It's $30 and it's just marching percussion, which is something that Logic does not have in it by default. I did not have access to this, these instruments at all prior to getting this plugin. I was like, $30? Thirty dollars. It's thirty dollars. I highly recommend going. I'm not sponsored whatsoever. I just it's a, it's an actual steal of a plugin. I guess really the only other thing left to comment on here is the fact that the um, brass section gets to have a little bit more feature in this part. <laughs> And then, of course, the last section of the song, which before I take apart, I'm just going to let play. So there's a lot of build up to this. Obviously, we have um, this measure long pause where nothing is playing except for this drum roll. And then after this drum roll comes in, um, we have this sort of big epic part, which really is really the entire part is just two things. It's one held A flat major chord and then this this moving bass line. And the tempo slows down the entire time it's happening. So let's first just dissect the parts that are just playing the chords, which are the horns the violas, the violins, um, the two solo violins, um, the tenor and the alto, the, the specifically the B3 organ and the flute and the piccolo. These are not playing that walking bass line at all. They are simply just playing, oh, and also the synth pad. They are simply just playing a chord at the end of the song. <laughs> And I have, um, just, just for added extra taste here, the uh, solo violins are playing 
uh, a high A flat, but then the second one is also playing a super high A flat, which is actually the highest A flat in this entire chord. We have uh, this note here, which this note's being played by a lot of different instruments, but then there's this note. This is the highest note in the entire arrangement. I think the only other instrument that's playing a note this high is the piccolo. I think the piccolo is also playing that note. Yeah, but it adds a little bit extra texture. And then, of course, um, on top of all of these instruments that are playing the chord, there is the electric guitar, which makes one last comeback to slam the last chord down on us. Let's dissect the other part happening here, which is the walking bass, which is being played by every bass voice in each section. So it's being covered by the synth bass, the timpani, the um, tuba, the cello, the bass vocal, and the pipe organ is also playing it. And so it just creates this walking bass. And the way that I set this up for most of them is that the original part just goes da 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 which is what the pipe organ is playing. And the timpani is also playing it this way. Everybody does a dramatic crescendo for the last note, but it is going up, is my point. But all the other instruments, the cello, tuba, bass vocal, and the bass synth, I do something slightly different with. They play an octave up. They play the whole part an octave up, where they go da 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 da. They play they play a low A flat for the last note, which I think just adds a lot more impact to that final chord. to top all of this off we have the marching drums which after they do their role continue to play all of these kind of mitch mat like mitch matching rhythms that progressively get slower and slower until they just stop and then all of that together creates this. And that is my iteration of Your New Home. Not really a super long song, definitely a much, the, probably the shortest song I've ever done a breakdown of, but there was a lot to take apart here, so it ended up still being a pretty long video. Um, I will now uh, let you listen to the entire thing, start to finish, uninterrupted. Um, I'm back, guys, I'm back. I'm back to uploading. Uh, uploading will become probably a somewhat regular thing again. I'm, I'm finally no longer super busy with school, so I can get back to this being actually a focus of mine. And I got a lot of I got a lot of cool ideas. You don't you don't understand. This was kind of like a random, random like, like spur of the moment decision was to make a remix of the song. And I was like, ooh, YouTube video breakdown time. But no, I have a lot of, I have a lot of genuine ideas planned, and they're gonna be made into videos soon enough. Anyway, enough rambling for me. You don't care. You just want to hear the song, and that's completely understandable. Um, I will now let you listen to the entire song uninterrupted from start to finish.
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.